Hailed as West Africa's golden child, it's one of the continent's great success stories. But the ride has not always been smooth. A major energy crisis between 2012 and 2015 had a devastating impact on Ghana's economy. Power outages became so unbearable, it forced the government to seek outside help. In stepped the Turkish built billion dollar car power ship, a 450 megawatt floating power plant, which is generating a quarter of Ghana's electricity requirements. There's also Aksar Energy, which built a 370 megawatt thermal power plant, supplying another 10% of Ghana's energy needs. Murat Chapto, the regional director of Aksar Energy, says the joint project came just in time and helped bring an end to the electricity shortage. But it's not just the energy sector that needs attention. Ghana is moving to upgrade its underdeveloped transportation network. Enter the new Terminal 3 at the Kotoka International Airport. Price tag, nearly $250 million. Turkish construction company Mapa won the contract to design and rebuild the terminal. Now completed, it has the capacity to handle 5 million passengers annually, more than double the capacity of the old airport. Okan Doan, the project manager of MAPA says, the new airport terminal will not only have a lasting impact on the country's transport network, it is helping train a new generation of highly skilled workers, especially in construction. With the increased passenger capacity, officials in Ghana are hopeful that their country can become a new regional air hub. We think the vision to become the hub in the West African sub-region is fairly well on course. We expect that we would, we would attract more airlines into our country. And Turkey's investments are helping Ghana reach that goal. Ghana is one of Turkey's largest and fastest growing trade partners in Africa. Over the last five years, Turkey's investments have increased to more than half a billion dollars from 190 million. And with close to 200 Turkish businesses operating in the country, trade ties are expected to strengthen further. But Turkey's outreach isn't just about building infrastructure. Turkey has this uh, enterprising and humanitarian foreign policy. So uh, we are having a number of programs uh, trying to assist uh, African countries. It's not only that we are uh, after trade. We are also here to help people with their needs and uh, meet their uh, expectations. And uh, this is a win-win situation for both uh, sides, Turkey and Africa. And then there is the project that's leaving a cultural footprint on a vast scale. Even from a distance, you can't miss Accra's new mosque. The Ghana National Mosque in the center of Ghana's capital has a design that is distinctly Turkish. Once complete, it will accommodate up to 10,000 worshippers in an area of 4,000 square meters. It's part of a complex being created by the Human Development Association International, or Hudayi, which will also house a cultural center, a hospital, and a school. Salman Uspunar is the general coordinator of Hudayi. He says it's not just a mosque for Muslims, but a complex that will have facilities that provide services to everyone. This is the largest mosque in West Africa. We brought Turkish engineers and architects to design the mosque, and most of the materials are from Turkey. It is a place of worship for Muslims, but we will have facilities that will be catered for all Ghanaians. Turkish interests in Ghana are just a representation of Ankara's growing relationship with Africa over the past decade. Turkey now has 40 embassies in Africa, compared to only 12 in 2008. And it's not only about business, it's about sustainable development and a shared future. Omar Kablan, Straight Talk.